Now, how do you sell? Tonight, bottled water. What the Australian Consumers Association calls one of the cleverest gold mine products of all, given it's virtually free on tap. Russell, bottled water costs on average 250 times as much as tap water, and it has no extra health benefits. Yet Australians spend more than $500 million on it each year. This must surely bring a tear of pride to your advertiser's <laughs> eye, Russell. <laughs> Is this you know, the ultimate in advertising? Well, it, it was uh, an amazing, if you like, all, lots of stars aligned in the, let's say, the 90s, mid-90s, where the PET bottle was created, which was a really low-cost way to package product. Um, it's a low cost of entry a business to get into. It doesn't cost you a whole lot to manufacture water, obviously, so therefore it's attractive. And then, of course, the large um, manufacturers of soft drinks, they can apply their distribution networks to, to water. This is turning you on a little, isn't it, Russell? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I can keep going as well. <laughs> and then, but ultimately, it comes down to two things. It, it's convenience and it was cool. And those two things still apply today. It grows 9%. It's still growing at 9% now. The interesting thing for me about that is that 25% of all bottled water is refiltered tap water. And my favourite example is the Hawaiian... They have this Hawaiian water which they uh, desalinated. And it sells for about $40. Uh, it, and they sell it as concentrated water. But it... <laughs> but wait, 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 wait. But the recommendation so is... The up, recommendation but... is to drink it, you need to dilute it. <laughs> With water. Yeah, genius. <laughs> sort of so water. Water. water from your tap? Mm. There's also a fashion statement to it as well. There's a, there's a branding statement to it as well. People walk around with brands on themselves. They walk around... They drive brands that they think reflect them. They, they carry water bottles around these days which they think reflect them. Speaking of brands, the Zhuzhi brands like Evian had been banging on since the 1970s about purity and suggesting that if we drink enough of their stuff we'd all look more like supermodels. But it wasn't until the late 1990s that the bottled water craze really caught on. Here's a typical ad from that time. in that moment, but unfortunately later on they got divorced and she took half his shell. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why, if they're doing an ad about water, are they showing a snail porn? This execution, the feel-good moment is snail porn, which is meant to stop you, engage you in the communication, and hopefully you remember it at the point of purchase. I spent four years at uni studying biology and at last it's come in handy, because those <laughs> snails are actually um, Franklin Mountain woodland snails. Never. I'm telling the truth. And you know, you know, they do that for 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> that is no joke. You have no made that up. <laughs> Look it up. 12 hours. <laughs> 12 hours of that. Bottled water costs a lot more than tap water, but can people really tell the difference? We put the Gruen audience through a blind taste test, offering them cups of tap water, premium bottled water, and the most popular bottled brand. So which one did you think was the tap water? Uh, C. A, I think. Um, I think it was A. A. A? They're all pretty similar. I just said A. And as far as the, the premium, the expensive bottled water choice? I thought that was B. Maybe C? C. I think it, the premium was C. I would honestly say that I think they're all the same. Out of 17 people, only one picked the tap water. Only one picked the premium water. Matt, when you have to advertise a product that is essentially the same product as, you know, the same one as all of its competitors. Where does the agency start? We're often presented with products that are exactly the same and you have to find something different in them and you have to create... That's what advertising does. It creates differences where mm. there potentially are none. So water is the ultimate. There is no difference. So it's all advertising created. You know, well, I'm annoyed with that segment. It's this idea that we're going to go out there and see if people can taste the difference in water. Of course they can't taste the difference in water. That's what we do. It's the, it's the image and it's the perception, it's the packaging uh, yeah, which creates the difference there. Yeah, that, that's the key to the business. So actually putting people in front and saying, oh, I bet you can't taste the difference between the water. Of course they can't. Well, I think, it, yeah, but I mean, some of those, like, your waters were like seven bucks and one was like, you know, out of your tap. No one is coercing tap. the money out of people's pockets. Yeah. No one's, there's no coercion going on. You can decide, I'm going to give you seven for that, because I like the design. Some people are aesthetically minded, Will. They'll say, yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ben Russell, did I, and look, I'm not Chris. I'm just finding this fascinating. Mm. If petrol came out of your tap at home for free, no one would ever go to yeah, a survey and fill it up. Just hang on a second. It doesn't come out of your tap for free. You have to pay for it. The utilities that charge you for the water that comes out of your tap, they are perfectly entitled to run an advertising campaign that says, why don't you use our water instead? They don't. They're lazy marketers. <laughs> 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 they are lazy marketers. Well, they you're, are. Really, you're the sort of guy who looks at the sun and says, I can't believe it's given it away for free. <laughs> There's a pitch. <laughs> Let's look at the ways the water brands try to differentiate. Fiji Water runs print ads which read like fairy stories. Our water begins as rain, purified by equatorial trade winds as it travels thousands of miles across the Pacific Ocean. Once it arrives in Fiji, it falls and filters through ancient volcanic rock over hundreds of years. <laughs> Todd, isn't that just an incredibly wanky way of saying it comes out of the ground like everybody else's? Yes. Yes, it is. But origin is a really good strategy. So it's more about the perception of what the origin is rather than the actual origin. And they're often very, very different. Uh, th I mean, I'm still trying to get my head around the fact that Mount Franklin doesn't come from Mount Franklin. <laughs> or my favourite one is uh, Everest water is from Texas. These companies, water companies, use glaciers and snow mountains and, uh, and lots of beautiful blue and, and crystal images. That's their strategy to communicate their symbols. If you haven't got exotic location credentials, there are other ways to carve your share of the market. Russell, we mentioned this. Is this one of those categories where, like, you know, the product's the same, so you're selling, selling the package that comes yeah. in? Design, design plays a huge role. I mean, that Fiji we were talking about before, that beautiful square bottle, it just, it, it's got became a different... Became iconic. Yeah, it became yeah. iconic. Yeah. And it, the design, the story, and the design played a ma major role, of course, in its success. The bottle shape is an interesting one, though, isn't it? Because Mount Franklin, and uh, there's no one called Pump, which is also in like, yeah. the, the action bottle, and they're both uh, owned by Coca-Cola, mm. Mount Franklin and Pump. They're the number one, number three brands in the market. Uh, would the water just be the same inside? Mm. Just different bottle? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think quite probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's highly likely. Yeah, and I, I, don't think that, um, I don't think that that is a particular revelation to anyone at all. People understand what they're buying. They understand that they like the pump because it's got the cap and therefore they use that when they go to the gym. They get all that stuff. I don't think people consciously are analysing Russell. I think people are buying into the dream and they're kind of... I don't, I don't think everyone has the level of awareness about what they're doing that you're the, talking about. I don't, the, I don't the, think they're I don't think, I don't they're think idiots, I'm drinking water. But I don't think most people are... Well, I think they understand they're drinking water. But I don't, think they, I don't think they think about the source, where it actually comes from. I don't think they link it to Coca-Cola or link it to Pepsi and go, oh, OK, I understand that's where it's coming from. I don't from. know about that. I, I think that it doesn't take a whole lot of investigation. It's all over the packaging. What's <laughs> interesting about that is how small that actually is. No, I mean, you would actually... You have to go look for it to find out that it comes from Coca-Cola. And there's good reasons for that. No, you don't have to look that hard in order to see that. I, I don't Russell, the brand is that big, Coca-Cola is that big. <laughs> now, the ratio is slightly out of proportion. However, the... <laughs> <laughs> Here's another shot of branding that has nothing to do with the contents of the bottle. Do something positive today. Help Mount Franklin raise $250,000 for the National Breast Cancer Foundation. You can help by visiting thewellofpositivity.com. Simply leave a positive message. For every message added to the well, Mount Franklin will make a $1 donation on your behalf. Together we can cause a sea of change. Mount Franklin. Drink positive. Think positive. Mount Franklin waves the breast cancer flag loud and proud, as you can see in this very subtle ad. <laughs> encouraging teenage boys to screw off nipples. <laughs> How important to its marketing is pinkness? In September, October, there's a big wash of pink, and this is one of many pink products. So if this is the only strategy that you're taking, which has been the strategy that they've taken for the past three years, you can put yourself in a danger area because you now need to stand out from within that crowd as well. If you think of it just purely from the manufacturer's point of view, it's, it's a very clever strategy. It's, it's the equivalent of like an environmental offset. So what they're, what they're saying is we're visibly going to be seen to be doing something uh, good. A, it's still today, even in a recession, 80% of people would rather pay for a product associated with a charity, all things being equal, than one that is not. I've always assumed that a percentage of the purchase of each bottle goes to the charity, but I was surprised to find out that's not the case. Mount Franklin makes a yearly pledge, effectively 
a license fee to use the pig. Now, to be fair, it never says we donate when we buy, but Matt, do you reckon that's what the company wanted us to think Look, with this? Look, I think it's very cleverly done. I think the implication is... I, I know I've walked into the supermarket and gone, oh, I get the pink ones there better than the blue ones. I, I feel like the more I buy, the more is being donated to breast cancer, and that's clearly not true. Wrapping your water in social conscience is one way to sell. Many brands also press the eco button as hard as they can. Fiji excitedly tells us that its water comes from a virgin ecosystem. Now, Matt, isn't that the same kind of virgin ecosystem that may be under threat from the greenhouse gases created partly from making and distributing bottled water? Absolutely. I work with Clean Up Australia and, you know, the, it's quite frightening the statistics of how much of the bottles end up in landfills. Like 60% yeah, of the plastic like. bottles end up in landfills. You say that like it's a bad thing, but when uh, the, the seas rise, we'll actually float. We'll be laughing then. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But I think Yay, <laughs> landfill. Yeah, but PET... <laughs> PET is 100% re recyclable. But it's not recycled. That's yeah. No, no, no. 40% per of it is recycled mm -hmm. and 60% of it isn't. Now, that, is that the manufacturer's issue or is that the issue of the consumer who just chucks it? Well, I think it's the manufacturer's issue not taking responsibility for the product they're selling. I mean, yes, it's about educating consumers, yeah. but surely the, if they're putting a product out into the market, they have to be responsible. No, they can't no, go, no, 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 well, no. hey, I, I hey, actually but no, not, sorry. But you have, to, you have to adopt that argument for virtually every package. Yeah. Well, no, but this is that's probably a... exacerbated by the fact that it is water and it's meant to be, you know, it's meant to represent a natural resource. I think it's more poignant because we're talking about water. It's estimated that, generally speaking, it takes three bottles of water to make a bottle of water. Now, Russell, as being mentioned, when our tap water is as good as most places in the world, bottled water just seems like an unjustified luxury. Is it still a triumph of advertising to you? Well, I haven't got a surprising answer for you, Will. They are creating margin, they're creating profitable businesses. Those profitable businesses, therefore, are employing people. So there's a whole bigger picture here. Um, however, if you're forcing me to say, I think this is a triumph, it is a triumph. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't forcing you to do anything. Right? You are. I never force you to do anything, my friend. And I, and I recycle all my bottles. Well, I say recycling, I sell them in the neighbourhood kids to make into bongs. <laughs> <laughs> to keep it all in perspective, maybe it's best to remember the wise words of actor and noted booze hound W.C. Fields, who once advised, I don't drink water, fish fuck in it. <laughs>